The movie begins on a small island off the west coast where a photographer named Samuel roams around taking pictures. We notice that most people he takes pictures of are sleeping in random places. As it turns out, a strange crisis has hit the island. Three days ago, people started falling asleep out of nowhere in the middle of a car ride, inside a sauna, and even while swimming underwater. At first, the observers were simply confused but they soon found out that the ones who slept would not wake up, almost as if they were in a coma. Several doctors and researchers have come to the island in the past 72 hours, but no one has found a cure to the unique pandemic. By now, all the permanent residents of the island are asleep, the lucky ones in their homes, some at their work, while others in the grocery store or in their cars. Their body is functioning properly, except, anytime they are moved from the original place they fell asleep, their pulse goes abnormally high. Something intriguing about the circumstance is that the peculiarity doesn't influence the individuals who are not a super durable inhabitant of the island preceding the event. Consequently, researchers have laid out a camp and place labels on each dozing human on the island to monitor them. Currently, no reporter is allowed in the infected zone but Samuel has somehow managed to sneak through the border amidst the chaos. While on the adventure, he enters a bus full of sleeping passengers to take pictures. He discovers a woman holding a live goldfish and decides to take it with him. In the bizarre circumstance, Samuel feels like the fish is his only friend and he talks to the animal accordingly. Some time later, they end up at a house which looks good enough. To spend a few days, Samuel cautiously walks in to find a woman sleeping on her bed. Her name is Stella and she was one of the lucky last ones to fall asleep. Samuel avoids invading her privacy and stays in the other room, not realizing that the researchers are outside his house, guarding the area. Since everyone conscious has been asked to leave the island, he is afraid he will be punished if found. The next day, Samuel fantasies about going to the supermarket and running into Stella however she barely gives any consideration to him. He is awakened unexpectedly when he calls out to her by her and she asks him how he knows it. A new day sparks a new adventure for Samuel as talks to a sleeping Stella while listening to the news on radio. The entire world is talking about the pandemic and the bizarre controversies are starting to roll in. Laughing at them, Samuel decides to explore the island in daylight. The first person he notices is a handman stuck to a tree, sleeping. Peacefully, he also finds out the animals on the island are still alive and Anders who is taking care of them. After about an hour of walking, he reaches the church where a large group of people are unconscious. Taking a few pictures, Samuel settles into a seat and falls asleep. In his dream, he and Stella are sitting opposite each other in a restaurant. They act like they have known each other forever and chat about what Samuel is doing on the island. Stella doesn't approve that he is taking advantage of the situation for money but Samuel argues that he is there for the experience, not money. Later on, he gets back and goes through Stella's effects to track down her everyday diary. As he understands it, his association with Stella gets more grounded and he keeps dreaming about her. In the dream, she tells him that she was one of the last ones to get hit. The first person she saw falling unconscious was her piano teacher who slept in the middle of a class. On being asked if she was scared, Stella replies that she was more confused. The doctors and researchers came but only discovered that the people should not be moved from the places they fell asleep. Stella finds it funny that there is a chance her heart will explode if she gets up from her bed. Samuel then takes the opportunity to ask her how she felt when she fell asleep. Stella describes it as a surreal feeling. She had strange vivid dreams and eventually got lost in them, not realizing that she was falling into a deep sleep. The scene changes to the next day and Samuel sets out on yet another adventure. He goes to a different neighborhood this time around him ends up seeing a car filled with balloons. While attempting to snap a photo of it, he sees the well-being laborers close by and needs to run back home. The episode takes Samuel back to the real world and he chooses to leave the island, having taken an adequate number of pictures. He wishes goodbye to Stella, packs his belongings and goes to the shore where his boat is. However, after spending quite some time at the shore looking at the boat, he decides otherwise. Just when he reaches home, he sees the faucet is running. Samuel remembers that it was running the first time he entered the house, but he is positive that he had turned it off. Suddenly, he is transferred back to his dream, sitting opposite Stella at the restaurant. She inquires about the actual reason he came to the island. Samuel finally comes clean that he came here for her. As it turns out, one year ago, he was on the island on vacation when he saw Stella at the grocery store. He followed her to a restaurant later that day where she seemed young and free which piqued his interest. But before he could ask for her number, the night ended and he never got to meet her again. Back in reality, Samuel goes to the grocery store to shop but two researchers come in to get some alcohol at the same time. One of them finds Samuel yet he abstains from getting found out by professing to be oblivious. After they are gone, he delightedly looks for fundamentals and even pays the dozing clerk prior to bringing some regular food items home. 
After that, we see him roam around Stella's house, observing her belongings and imagining how her personality would be. He hits the jackpot when he finds a tape recorder in the attic that has recordings of the list of her favorite things. The list has random things like the sound of a typewriter, headless Barbie dolls, and flamingo floaties, but the more Samuel listens to it, the more his infatuation grows. On the list, Stella describes that driving on the beach is her favorite thing to do and so, Samuel imagines him and Stella outside looking for a car to drive to the beach. He dreads the idea of stealing from sleeping people but Stella convinces him that they are just borrowing it. They soon find a car they like and break into the owner's house to look for the keys. Samuel enjoys Stella's free-spirited nature and starts believing she is more than just his imagination. A while later, he wakes up to the sound of a car outside and notices two health workers coming into the house for a weekly checkup. He quickly takes every one of his effects and conceals in a wardrobe seconds prior to being gotten. The laborers check Stella for any anomalies and leave not long later. Samuel spends the rest of his day laying beside Stella's bed and talking to her. The next day, he yet again goes to the attic and plays the second part of her tape. This time, she talks about the things she hates and reveals that she feels lonely and vulnerable. Samuel wishes he could do something to make her feel better which in turn, makes him feel helpless. Yet again, he drifts into his imagination and starts chatting with her. The duo talks about soulmates and how everyone has won. Samuel suggests they might be each other's soulmates but Stella doesn't believe it. Coming back to reality, Samuel finally decides to go back home now that he has no purpose to be on the island. He makes it halfway to the dock but cannot get himself to leave Stella. At night, he returns home and gets high of Stella's stash, dreaming about them smoking together. Starting that day, he makes it his mission to do all the things that were on Stella's list of things she loved. He makes lasagna and beverages brew out of a wine glass for a similar explanation. When delirious, Stella shows up in his fantasies, angry about him not letting her be. She declares that the version of Stella he knows from her journals and tapes is not her. Samuel recognizes that she is right. After all, he has never talked to her in real life and their relationship is entirely in his head. As he tries convincing himself coming to the island was not a mistake, Stella asks him to leave her alone and disappears into the darkness. In the following scene, Samuel once again decides to leave but his journey is different this time around. He feels extremely thirsty on his way and gets strange hallucinations. To quench his thirst he breaks into an apartment but the more he drinks, the thirstier he gets. The walls start closing on him, filling him up with anxiety which is when he realizes he is about to fall asleep like the others. As he tries his best to stay awake, he gets a call from imaginary Stella who calls him back home. He suddenly wakes up and returns to her house in a hurry, asserting that if falling asleep is inevitable, he would rather sleep close to her. The next morning, to Samuel's utter surprise, he wakes up. Nonetheless, he is uncertain the way that long he can remain conscious for. Pursuing the open door within reach, he composes notes for Stella on the off chance that she at any point will understand them. It takes him the entire day and at the end, he, too, falls into a coma. Time passes and a few days later, Stella moves in her sleep. Things take a turn when she opens her eyes, wide awake after being asleep for more than a week. She realizes that she has no energy and goes to drink water from the faucet. This is when she sees a second toothbrush on the counter and figures someone else has been living with her. While cautiously approaching a sleeping Samuel in the living room, Stella is more confused than scared. She wants to wake him up but gives up after a few tries. The house is filled with random objects she likes like a Barbie without her head and a giant flamingo floaty. Stella is pleasantly surprised to see them but it washes away as soon as she finds out Samuel read her journals and listen to her tapes. In a fit of rage, she hits him several times and discovers the notes he wrote for her. In it, he is sorry to her for paying attention to her tapes and guarantees her that she is like every other person. He tells her inclination forlorn and developing a guard framework is okay yet requests that she act naturally. The notes overwhelm Stella as she figures out that the stranger in her house knows her inside out and she, too, feels like she has known him forever. In the next few days, she gets several dreams with Samuel in them. They chat about his likes, dislikes, fears, and responsibilities, as he did with her in his dreams, even though they have not even met each other in real life. Stella knows they are connected. Hence, she takes care of him like he did to her. Then comes the morning when Stella wakes up later than usual to a pleasant surprise. Samuel is no longer on the sofa he was sleeping on. The two meet each other in the kitchen for the first time but to them, it feels like they are lovers reuniting after decades. Samuel introduces himself and shakes hands with her, delighted to know that she is just as happy to meet him. In the final scene, we are brought back to the bus where it all started. The woman whose goldfish Samuel had stolen wakes up from her sleep and we see that she now has two fishes in her hands instead of one. Thanks for watching video.